and welcome back to XP Waste, where I forgot to wear my Slayer helmet to Nex, and I still have the cough. Hi, I'm Oxy. And I'm Michael. Uh, if this is your first time tuning into XP Waste, welcome. We're glad you have chosen our show to fill your ear holes, as they say. We're a old school RuneScape podcast. We'll talk primarily a about old school RuneScape. There will be some tangents. Um, we will get off topic. We might even talk about RuneScape 3. Uh, if you're not new around here, welcome back. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Oxy, how you doing? I heard you have a, a cough. <laughs> Man. 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 I got... I'll... Michigan's been off the chain recently because it's like starting to be summertime. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. Yeah. So like we are on the cusp of summer. But Michigan either doesn't know or doesn't care because <laughs> on Friday, the high was 75 and I woke up and it was 37 in the morning. What? So we had a nearly 40 degree temperature shift as the day went on. That's in terrible. Michigan which is annoying as hell. Mm -hmm. So on Friday, I woke up and I thought my allergies were just off the chain. So I took an allergy pill and it just like didn't get any better. And I was like, oh no, this might be like a cold cold. And if it is, I'm going to be pissed. Like, like a summertime hay fever type thing. Mm -hmm. And I had plans yesterday on Saturday to go hang out with an old friend of mine. And I'm like, I am not missing that. Like, over my dead body, am I going to miss these plans? So I think on Friday night and Saturday morning, I, like, willed myself to not be sick. And, like, the worst I had, I had a bit of a lingering cough, and I had a little bit of a stuffy nose, and I only had to blow my nose, like, one time. The whole evening I was out, right? We were feeling great. <clears throat> I woke up this morning... And every part of my body was like, guess who? And I have been feeling like shit since I woke up today. I yeah. think I was able to will the sickness out for an evening, which is truly all I needed. And now I am, I'm not quite dying like I was. I'm just like congested and tired. Like it's, it's definitely like a summertime hay fever. Mm -hmm. I'm not like actually dying i'm just annoyed that like bro i did this like two weeks ago yeah why are we here again it's like a revolving so, door of sickness but uh, but like in and out my kid my kids aren't sick my mm. co-workers aren't sick so i i think i got it just by like when you when you go to sleep and it's 60 degrees and you wake up and it's almost freezing like frost on the car is almost freezing yeah and then by the end of the work day it's 75 <laughs> like it's not good for your body it's really not you know so we've been we've been struggling a bit this week with the sickness um but other than being down with said sickness oh wa uh, 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 um i've been playing mostly the group iron man in yeah. runescape because yeah. like let's be honest that's what the people care about uh <clears throat> mostly the gim kind of the main like i've done a little bit of stuff uh but mostly the Mostly the groupie. Um, you are am, a questing maniac this week. Yes, I am nine quests away from uh, nine quests away from a quest cape, and other than a kingdom divided and a night at the theater, I cannot do seven of them. Like I don't have the skill set for mm -hmm. um, for most of them. I think I just got no, I didn't because I don't have sixty five smithing for devious minds. Um, but like, yeah, so currently I'm on both accounts at MLM again, again. <laughs> going for base 90s and I'm go going for 72 mining. I'm going to get 69 this episode, depending oh. on how long we last, maybe 70, but okay. probably just 69. And then frankly, I'm content to boost for my arms, big adventure, because that's what I did on my main and it was fine. <clears throat> but I need 70 for Song of the Elves. So oh, right, at right. minimum, I have to do a few more. Uh, and then, yeah, remember how last week I was talking to Big Game about how like quest bosses are a lot easier now that I know how to play the game? Yeah. It is true they are, but uh, the Remnant of Ock or the Soldier of Ock, the Amasket Soldier at the end of Beneath Cursed Sands, took me five attempts. That shit sucked. And... 
I was after there. like I was after there. like three years. Yeah, I was tilted at that yeah. boss because like, and I had the same problem with Sins of the Father because uh, Vanstrom is, I swear to God, the hardest quest boss in the game. I am. I'll put that on my chest. <laughs> like I thought it was difficult when I was a shitter at this game. Now that I'm like, you know. I think I can hold my own in PVM. Vanstrom mm -hmm. sucks. That is a hard fight. Yeah. So <clears throat> I had not so much fun with that. I think my biggest problem with both the Remnant of Ock or the Soldier of Ock from Beneath Curse Sands and Vanstrom, I can't <coughs> hit the boss. Like, I don't have Piety, and I had, like... yeah. I have like 73 attack and 69 strength. So like it would be real cool if I could hit the goddamn boss cuz mechanically I get it. But when you can't hit the enemy, you don't get the kills. So like that's annoying as shit. I like, guess that's what I've been <clears throat> struggling with, I suppose, these last uh these last few days doing quest. Yeah, Vanstrom with the flail is not a good time. Like I will I will say that Vanstrom with the flail is not a good time. Yeah. Um I'm but... not excited to do it. I mean I kind of am cuz it means quest progress and like account progress. But, yeah. Uh I'm I'm a little worried. I mean I'm a little worried about the the mini Beneath Curse Sands boss and <coughs> Desert Treasure when that comes out cuz it's going to be a a bitch. <laughs> I mean, that's I'm not. That's definitely gonna be a while before yeah. I do that on my group Iron Man. Because like, oh, beneath Curse Sands, the Fallen Empire. What stats do I need? All right, so I need sixty rune crafting, fifty five construction, seventy thieving, and secrets of the North done. Oh. So that's all I have left to do for that. And it it, it recommends level one hundred combat. So like, oh. It's going to be some spicy fights for yeah. sure. So I'm going to do that on the main first. Then like, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be rough on the iron, but the main should be fine. Hopefully once we get a grasp for what the bosses are, but yeah, I, I have a kingdom divided and a night at the theater are the two that I can do. I've just been lazy for a kingdom divided. Uh, cause I've done nothing but like master level quests all week long. <laughs> um, and then a night at the theater i kind of want to do with the boys yeah like yeah i think i i don't know if it was last week or whatever but i think it was last week i said i got verzik to p3 like 40 percent. like i died to green ball so we'll be able to do it no problem mm -hmm. um but i kind of want to do it together as a group so it's kind of where i'm at with uh with a night at the theater but otherwise quest cape is coming along skilling just is so bad on this account like the gathering skills are fine like the production skills are okay like what is rune crafting considered is rune crafting a production skill i don't know what rune craft support rune i think support skill? i think it's a support I skill i think the only support skills are thieving hunter and slayer oh i could be mistaken but i don't know i think agility uh, might, might be, also a be a support skill i don't know whatever it is <clears throat> i did a little guardians of the rift yesterday and got from like I think I got from like 46 to 50. So mm. Guardians of the Rift is kind of cracked for XP. It really is. Um, sucks for catalytic points. Catalytic points on a level 46 rune crafting <laughs> account sucks. Um, yeah, because I think your best catalytic at the higher levels is death runes. And that... Yeah, you need 77, I think, for bloods. Oh, yeah, bloods are catalytic. Yeah. I bloods remember. are catalytic. But like... Law is 54, death is 65. So, like, nature at 44, and then you have to wait 10 levels to get another Ugh. catalytic. So, like, the options are like fire runes with the good stuff, mm. or like, you know, body runes for catalytics. Like, <laughs> eh, that doesn't feel very good. Um, but no, I'm just hanging out. GIM is going well enough. I've. I've discovered a great way to get more Meyer fungus now, which is apparently you do it at Verisen Haza. Mm. You like teleport to Verisen Haza and you run north and you grab the little four stack right by like on the road to sleep. Yeah. And then you just bank there. So I've been using Draken's Medallion to get there, using Arty Cloak to recharge my prayer and then just repeating the process. Oh, so wow. Hopefully we have enough more Meyer fungus for our potion maker to to keep getting us more stamps, but 
that's like all the really important updates that have happened because my main has not done shit. Um, so transitioning to what you've done this week, what's your total level, Michael? 1494. Oh, I'm 1498. I might beat you to 1500. Uh, maybe. If you keep questing. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so what what we, what we, blah, 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 blah. words are so hard. What have you been up to is the combination of words I just tried <laughs> to say there. So you you've been talking <laughs> about like sickness. I think if if I was a betting man, I'm going to be where you are but next week cuz my wife like ironically is is going through the same exact thing as you congestion coughing just like not feeling good and it's really hard to avoid like passing that between people um so i feel fine right now it's almost guaranteed when the lad gets it yeah when he inevitably gets sick you're screwed he's been coughing and like he's had congestion so i took him to the is his pediatrician and they gave him some antibiotics so i don't know if i'd get it from him I probably get it from the wife, but like I feel fine right now, which is great. But I, I'm really expecting it to hit midweek. Hopefully, it won't. But I'm like I have zero expectations. You know, one person gets sick in the family. Generally, you get you all get sick. But other than that, I feel fine. And I've been like the last three days, I've been grinding agility because the goal was to get to 62 to do beneath curse sands. But then I kind of just got the bug. I got the itch to do it, and I've been running Sears course, uh, Sears Village course laps, and I'm at almost 300 laps completed so far, and 65 agility. So I think I'm just going to go. I saw you sh- just hit that. So geez. yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to 70. Potentially, what is there anything past 70 for quest? No, there is for diaries, right? Or is it 70? I can't remember. I mean, seventy one is Mauritania hard diary, and then okay. which there's, I could use so there's not potion. many. There's not many agility shortcuts. Like it, when, Zora would be nice. So if I got like seventy four, would be nice. But with an agility potion, past, past seven, like a bulk of shortcuts are pre seventy. Mm. Then there's like a few that are seventy five, but most of the ones that are tier eighty and above, like. I think you need one for the Elite Diary for the Elven Overpass, mm-hmm. which is 85. Um, and then obviously and 85 then, is also, you can boost for Artie. I don't know if I'm going to go to 90 or 85. I might, honestly, I might stop at whatever is required for the, uh, to get that shortcut in Trollheim um, for, the, for the herb patch there. Because if I do, it's like I think it's the Fremenic. Or the Western Fremenic Hard Diary. Western provinces or Fremenic? It's Fremenic Hard Diary. Fremenic Hard Diary. Shortcut. Yeah. So if I do that, I at least have the the level to be able to to go there. But like after I get uh after I get seventy agility, I think I'm gonna go try and smash out some diaries, easy and medium, do some more quests, and then put every single lamp into Herblore and get seventy Herblore, and then literally. It's basically just like spend a few hours with uh <laughs> with uh construction, like making all the planks and then actually doing mahogany homes to get to seventy construction. And then I I haven't done like the actual math for my fifty three to seventy smithing grind, but I have the GP, I think, to be able to buy all the gold ore. If TMD is listening to this, he would say Re no do giants foundry uh, maybe uh, but like i probably would end up doing steel items and at this point i feel like i want the steel bars for cannonballs more than i want to not spend all the money on gold on. ore doc don't you not have mithril from mother from Slayer? oh i have a t- i have a little bit of mithril i'll check the bank Um, So what I did was I made mithril bars. I have like a thousand. I have more mithril ore because I've been at mother of mine. mm -hmm. So I'm just going to use all the mithril bars I have. That's probably like 20 swords maybe worth. I have no idea. Oh. Um, And I'm just going to use that Giant's Foundry and see how far I get. Because like the banked XP plugin doesn't account for Giant's Foundry. Really? So. Hmm. I'm going to check my bank once I get back to it. But yeah, the gains have been pretty pretty stellar 
I'm, I really wanted to get 1500 total because honestly, I could just go out, I could get like six really quick uh, construction levels and just do it and just get it. So I have, mm-hmm. oh my goodness, I have 4,200 mithril ore and I have 9,600 coal. You might actually Whoa. be just short on coal because you need... Isn't it two? For Blast Furnace, it's two for Mithril. Okay. It's, it's the amount of coal is halved. So, like, you might be just short on coal for, for your Mithril ore, which, like, good problem to have because yeah. coal is super easy to come by with Mother of Mine. True. Um, and Kingdom. You can, like, yeah. get a bunch of coal from Kingdom. The plan right now, before I go back to Blast Furnace, is to actually get the coal bag from Mother Load Mine so that it just makes that, that whole process a lot easier. And a lot of the guides that you watch include a coal bag. So I'm at 40 of 100 nuggets to get, to, uh, to get the coal bag. And the coal bag makes Mother Load Mine way more AFK. So it's like, it's a win-win in my book. I'm at, Why does it make Mother Load Mine more AFK? So... Not man, sorry, less click intensive, not more AFK. Um, but like either way, how does the coal bag help with that? I have the larger sack, so I have 180. You already have the larger sack. Yeah, so I have. I've gotten the full set. I've got the upper level lo- unlocked, and I have. I sold back the Holy full set. Shit! I did dog. the diary and sold the set back, and I have the larger sack. And I'm actually I'm 155 XP off of 75 mining, which I I don't know why I didn't just get 75 when i was there but uh, huge for the atom <laughs> or gains yeah so whenever you um whenever you withdraw all the ore from the sack and you're like going back and forth from the deposit box yeah. you can fill up the coal bag before you go to the deposit box and it saves you from running ha- having to run back and forth so many times because you get a lot of coal like at least two or three inventories when you have the larger sack, is just coal. And so it gives you 28 spots. You can fill up an entire inventory's worth, and then you can just empty it um, when you're there. And I always have an item in my inventory anyway because the, the process that I do for Mother Load Mine, I think it's six full like deposits. But what you do is uh, five is 27, and then one of them is 26. And that, that equals out 188 in the sack and the max you can get in the sack is 189 i do 21 and then and then 28 or is it 28 yeah that's the that's the the way to get i don't do that shit (laughs) i just sold my prospector top on the groupie 95 golden nuggets baby we're getting that coal back today i didn't even i was like dog how'd you get so many you're like i sold the outfit i'm like well shit that's actually a great idea (laughs) because i don't give a shit about this outfit anymore did you get the diary all done (laughs) No, of course I got the diary. Okay, done. good, good. That's good. the first. Like, I bought the last piece, and I'm like, sweet, let's get this nightmare step out of the way. Well, you say that, but your boy over here got the full set, forgot to do the diary step, and sold it back. And then I had to rebuy it, do the step, and then sell it back again. Wow. So just. You are a mumpty ass. I am. Let me tell you. 150%. I am. <laughs> so, coal bag, and then. We're off to the races with uh with smithing, and that's that's basically, I think, without actually looking, I th- I'm pretty sure that's all of the quest requirements. Oh frick, dude! <sighs> I forgot hunter. I need seventy hunter. So I'll be yeah I'll be doing birdhouse runs when I think about it, and then once I get to fifty three, I think it is, I'm gonna do great chins. Great chins until I can do. Red salamanders. Hold on, I'm gonna look this up right now, live on the podcast. Yeah, so it's it's gray chins with box traps. Oh, 53, and then from 53 to 59, I'll go and do uh, red salamanders, and then 59 probably to 67, I'll do uh, black salamanders to 70 because they're pretty quick, and I don't really care to sit in the wilderness. Just like if I die, I'm not losing anything. Maybe some nets. But I, Hunter just sucks. Low level. It really does. I, I kind of track with you as far as like your hatred for low level Hunter getting to 80. Because your tune totally changed once you hit 80. You're like herbivore for life. Dude, just like, <laughs> I mean like, 
that's the thing, I guess, with a lot of skills in this game. If eventually there comes a point <clears throat> where the skill actually becomes either fun or tolerable. Like, for example, you know, even the worst skill in the game, mining, VM's not too bad. You guys have a good team. Uh -huh. VM's pretty solid, right? I struggled to sit at a single activity for a while. Yeah, same. But VM is pretty VM is pretty good if you got a good team and you've got, you know, good roles set and things like that. Because, like, you don't know, you only fail it if you greet it. Like, it's not like a team is going to cause you to die, you know, if you got mm -hmm. people you're in, like, VC with. Maybe, like, hanging out, watching a movie, you know. I was talking to Fear the other day. Fear said he plays another game when he goes to VM. So, like... Mm. You don't need to be too focused. <clears throat> Herbivore is a game changer. Blood runes are a game changer. Uh, God, what else? I would probably say for Slayer, it starts at Gargoyles. Some would argue Kerasks, but I think Gargoyles are really where, like, you start to get, like, one mil per task, mm -hmm. you know? And then you get to, like, Abyssal Demons, where you can, like, burst and barrage. You get Necreals and things like that. So I think every skill at the, the mid to higher level has a point where it goes from like, oh my god, this is misery, to like, this is actually pretty good, you know? Even like, barbarian fishing, once you get the last barb fish unlocked, which is the the leaping salmon, or mm -hmm. leaping sturgeon at 70, the XP rates are like, what, 60k, 60K an hour? 60k an hour usually. I get so like, like 55, 50. Yeah, so like, AF and like, you drop all them bitches, like, it's actually pretty... It's not a ton of fun, but I think every skill definitely has. It's like, okay, this isn't bad. And Herbivore is Hunters. This isn't too bad. You know? yeah. Unless you yeah. like three taking chins or you really want to make money. Because, like, black chins will make you a hell of a lot more money than Herbivore will. True. But, True. Oh, <laughs> just thinking about black chins, man. Oh. I uh, I don't think I've ever sat and actually caught black chins on any account for more than like three minutes. I did not do a single black shin hunting from dog from whatever anyone, to ninety nine hunter. Anyone remember in Shattered Relics League where there was a task to equip one thousand black chins? That oh. sucked. That was terrible. It was absolutely terrible because people were PKing you and the only item you would lose was your goddamn chins because they're programmed to run away on death. So Such an I'd get like mechanic. 150 chins. I get like 150 chins and then bank them and have to like come back because like some asshole would try to, you know, triple AGS spec me with all his relics and shit. So yeah. like, wait, ugh. wasn't there a relic that gave you like more chins per catch? There was, but because of that, and because of the task, people were like, oh, we're about to ruin someone's afternoon. <laughs> so, like, I, I died a few times, but I never lost, like, I, I think, when I, whenever I died, I would die early. Yeah, so I'd bank, I'd good. come back, I'd die with, like, 40 shins in my inventory, and be like, oh, that's annoying. Yeah. But I had friends who were like, we're just gonna raw dog it and do it in one go, and they would die with, like, 800 black shins <gasps> in their inventory, and have to, like, redo the entire thing. So that's dumb. Yeah. Like that's it is it is dumb. That's the consequences so, of your own actions right there. As, as far as like me catching chins, this, we're not friends. Like I'm 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 done with that content. I don't like doing it. Yeah. But I can't do it on the GIM, unfortunately, which I'm not too mad about. I caught gray chins on my main account early early on, which wasn't terrible. Yeah. Um, gray chins I thought were I don't know. Gray and gray red, they're chill. the same. Um pretty much like you just sit there there's no risk of death it's going to be crowded great chins probably less so because people don't really catch them but corrend woodland area yeah that's where it's at yeah red chins are always packed because of bots so i probably won't do any red chins if i get if i get to 53 and great chins are just like super chill i'm going to look at the xp rates and see what the difference is I'm like 99% positive that red salamanders are going to be better XP than gray mm. chins. But if it's like, if it's negligible, like the difference, I may just stay at gray chins because um, Ilagio said in the recording booth chat, like they're good for range XP. And so, yeah, that's true. Toss a couple I mean, thousand, see what happens. 
because I'm going to get Monkey Madness 2 done at some point for the little tunnel. And you, you're like, you get net positive on para potions there, which is, which would be nice. And range levels, they come easy, but it's always nice to have a high range level for, like, we're wanting to do raids, we're wanting to do higher level content, so. Oh, let's, uh, speaking of raids, that is both kind of a great transition into main title content, kind of, mm. and uh, TMD and I did our first uh, level 50 entry mode TOA. It's I, a piece of yeah, cake. Yeah, dude. It's a piece of cake. But a 150 is going to take a thousand years. It's going to be a long because raid. Because yeah. our DPS just sucks. Like, we didn't get DPS checked at Akka because we have MSBI. So, like, that concern was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, but, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I was screwing up at Akka because it was one of the few raids, like, the first time in, like, a, probably six months that I've done a raid without feeling special turned on. Oh. Like, our 50 invocation was, like, blowing mud, because that's what we're used to, and then, like, four of the six warden invocations, because I told TMD, I'm like, you gotta understand, I will die at P3. Yeah, if, if it's we not, do not fast. have overclock two. Like, if yeah. we don't have overclock two at least turned on, I will die. And, like, I people have done, like, you know, normal raids with me where I screw up because I'm on the insanity timer. Mm. Like, and I, I, I can't imagine doing slow wardens anymore. But the 50 really wasn't that bad. You get a shit ton of supplies because we don't ever turn like need less help or anything like that on. We didn't mm-hmm. have on a diet on. So literally shit loads yeah, you had of like supplies. Eight brews, five restores in the life chest or something. It was pretty cracked. Yeah. So we'll be able to do 150s, but like, damn, they're going to take a while. But I would say that for most people in most MMOs, raids are like one of the funner pieces of content to do it's Mm -hmm. either raids or dungeons or some sort of like more end game piece of content Mm -hmm. that people really enjoy doing but it takes a bajillion freaking years to get there end game yeah trying end game so trying to invite other people to play with you is tough so michael how do we get people to play RuneScape with us? <laughs> it's a great question. Listen, all right, listen, man. I'm not feeling great today. My transitions aren't what they aren't what they normally are. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I had a I had a transition that I was trying to cook. Oh, um, well, then yeah, no, no, cook that one up. I'll I'm gonna sit here and blow my nose and like. Okay. Well, well, okay. It's gonna be like chopped style XP wasters. Like I presented my dish, I presented my transition. Michael's gonna present his, and we're gonna decide which one's better. But okay. we're gonna leave them both in the episode. All right. So this screenshot, Bing. Editing Oxy, take care of that for me. Uh, take care of what? The screenshot that's on the screen right now. What? Oh, there's a screenshot. On <laughs> yeah, there's the a screenshot on the screen. So as you can see, I shot my shot, and I, I. I messaged a celebrity and I asked them. <laughs> oh God, this screenshot. I asked them, <laughs> hey, Post Malone, do you play RuneScape? <laughs> Haven't gotten a reply. I might not. This is not going to reply. But I could. I could. You never, you <laughs> really never know. Like, he could just go through his like DM requests one day and see my name and be like, wait, no, I have never played RuneScape. And reply. Like, you never know. This isn't an open invitation for you guys to spam celebrities asking if they play RuneScape, but like, I know that Post Malone is a gamer. I know that he plays like tabletop RPGs. He plays card games. Uh, he plays video games a lot. So I know he's a gamer. I know he's a nerd. And uh, you never know if you played RuneScape or not. Like, the person that you're running laps with, you know, L9J, they could be a celebrity. They could be someone famous. You just, you never know. Um, so I shot my shot, haven't gotten a reply, but that sparked uh, just like the thought of how do, we, how do we get people to play this game? What would you say to somebody who's never played RuneScape to, to like convince them to play? Or what would you say to convince them to not play RuneScape? Like that was kind of the thought of like, what do you say to and to not get somebody to play? I like where you're going though, Oxy, with the raids. Because that, that to me is like, it's kind of where the end game is at this point. Group content that's like repeatable and challenging. 
and that's kind of how it is in in a lot of other MMOs too. Uh, World of Warcraft, like the end game is raids. I've never really played World of Warcraft, but I have friends that play it. They're like, yeah, we got to do the raid, and the, a new raid is coming out, and the the armor that we want is from the raid. If you play Destiny, Destiny Two, like it's all about the raids. It's all about the group content that you can do. So that that's a great that's a great starting point. I like it. Now, getting somebody to that point on their account, that's a different story. I think, I think the thing that I always tell people is like, hey, uh, if you play RuneScape, I'll give you like 10 mil. And then you'll just be set for GP. And you'll, you'll never have to worry about the hardest thing to worry. Like everybody worries about in the early game is like, where do I get the money to buy the things I need? Because obviously, we're not going to make them start as an Iron Man. They'll have access to the GE. Why in the uh, world would you ever do that, my <laughs> friend? You're well, that, a f***ing psychopath. That, you're like, oh my god, you're going to play an MMO by yourself. You're going to love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> that's a don't. That's on, the, that's on the do's and don'ts list. That, that's a don't. That's my, that's my number one don't. I <laughs> swear to god, if you're trying to get someone into RuneScape, and like, you might enjoy Iron Man mode. You might have, that's definitely an opinion. You might love Iron Man mode to death. I promise you, unless you know someone who enjoys that exact same style of gameplay in another game, do not lead (laughs) with, you're going to make an Iron Man unless you really don't want them to play. Okay, so Elagio said in the recording booth chat, I convinced my friends in joining our group and playing OSRS using pets. He wants to go for the Vorky. So in that statement, group Iron Man. Group Iron Man could be the way. So it's, it's a do and a don't at the same time. It's more of a don't because solo Iron Man is not that fun if you've never played this game. Like if you're coming right into the game because a lot of the stuff that you do early game if you've never played is like googling what's on the like googling not googling but like looking up on the wiki what to buy from the ge (laughs) for the quest and for the content that you're doing but group iron man might be a fun way to get somebody into this game i know a lot of people like they got their spouse to play because they started a group iron man and technically you could treat two normal accounts as like a, a an unofficial group but the 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 but the official, the officialness, officialness is, is what I'm saying? Like the, the officiality? Words, man. Words are hard on this Sunday afternoon. Oh, what the f*** <laughs> are you babbling about, Michael? Are you good, homeboy? I'm great. Um, <laughs> the, uh, how, it, how official it is with the little the blue helmet or the red helmet makes group Iron Man way more fun. But going back to my, to my first point, do and don't give them money. Um, because Iron Notice in the recording booth chat said, I think giving them the GP would turn them off. For some people, yes. So you know your friends better than we do. So for me, this is coming from my own experience, I tried to get my brother to play, and I gave him like 10 mil, and I think it helped, because if, you're, if your friend is the type of person who gets like frustrated when they just can't do something, they're like, I want to do this quest, but I just I can't, buy the item I need. Uh, and then they quit because they're frustrated. Having that little nest egg of GP just to get them to take that part of the game, that stressful part of the game away could help, but it also could hinder and, and it could make things way too easy. Because as a veteran RuneScape player, I know the money-making method. I've been playing this game for 20 years. I know what to do. Um, but somebody who's never played RuneScape and they didn't play when they were a kid, like what you're just going to tell them to go chop willows and like sell them. No, that's not going to, that's not going to help. Um, it's going to hinder them. So yes, give them GP, but also know, know your audience. I think another big one is offer. Like I've offered to buy people membership before. I'm like, Hey, I was, I was, I was going <laughs> to say like, as to build off of that point, like I, whatever I've been, you know, playing with people on new accounts, 
I don't like giving them a bunch of money is nice because like they have money, but also sometimes they don't know what to do with the money, which like I, it, it could go either way. You're much better posed to spend your money on a bond mm -hmm. for them. True. Because if you try to drag them through the free to play experience, so like here, here's my thing about bringing new people in, right? <clears throat> Putting them through free to play if they've never played RuneScape before, oh, <laughs> don't do that to them. If it's they played torture. when they were kids, that's one thing because like you can relive some fun nostalgic experiences. Yeah. If they've never heard of RuneScape and you're like, oh my god, we're gonna do all this stuff in free to play like the good old days, don't, don't do that. Stop it. Get some help. You know, because they're doing that without agility. They're doing that without teleport tablets. It's just like without jewelry. It's all just runscape at that point. Yeah. It sucks. Let me tell you. A lot of people will like try to make it a goal to do all the free to play quests in free to play before they move to members. And while you have every right to do what you want to do, I think you shouldn't do that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate. Like if there was anything that I would die on a hill for, it's don't play free to play. Oxy and I did a whole episode about it many, many, many moons ago where we, we made brand new accounts and we, we played on a free to play account for like an entire week and it was miserable as hell. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, at most, I think you can go, like, you have to train your magic up to, what is it, 37 is the highest you can get for, for Falador Teleport. And then from there, that's it. Like you're teleporting to all the free to play cities, but you have to A, get to 37 magic, and B, find a place to buy law runes. I guess you can buy them off the GE, but if you're a fresh account, nobody's giving you any GP, how are you making the money to get law runes? Law runes are precious commodity. It's not like you can runecraft them either. So there's just a lot of like. A lot of hoops you have to jump through in order to like make free to play a fun experience. Or the flip side of that is like people who are having fun in free to play are like putting massive restrictions on their account. And that's but, but the they fun don't, part. But they don't know that. And I think that that's a big part of like, that's why I say like if they played when they were kids. <clears throat> free to play is one thing to like start off and like walk around and have a good time and like relive the glory days get them killed the dark wizard shit like that um because that like that's how we all started this game like i started ooh, old Griggsy just got the snakeling at ooh, 109 what kc spoon. sick what that's a spoon pretty that's quite the spoon god damn um but yeah if they didn't if they didn't play as kids I think free to play is rough just because I'm biased towards free to play, mm -hmm. you know? So as far as like money or anything like that goes, my biggest piece of advice, don't play with them on your main account. Oh yeah. Make a brand new account to play with them. And I mean, brand new you two go through tutorial island together yeah you two meet this absolute god in lumbridge which is your just your main account <laughs> give each account a bond and bond them up for membership and then this isn't a new account where you're like alfie trying to rush his 400th hardcore that's gonna die right <laughs> like this not you're not playing the like osiris guide hyper efficient scape mm -hmm. You're going on an adventure, right? I've had, so I've had my fair share of experiences, like walking people through new accounts and things like that. <clears throat> Depending on what they like to do is kind of how I like to direct what they're doing. So like, for example, I had an ex who after like a year or so of dating was finally like, fine, I'll try old school RuneScape. And pretty much the only way I could be like, this game is fun. It's just like Elagio said, I'm like pets. There are pets in the game. And she's like, bullshit. I'm like, there are. So the first thing we did was we bonded up membership. We trained a little bit. We did some bullshit quests. And then we did Gertrude's cat. 
And she got her own little kitten and she was thrilled. And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, you train your kitten by essentially like playing the game. Right. Right. Yeah. I've had other friends who like max comp capes on RS3. Absolute dog shit OSRS <laughs> accounts. And they haven't like played. They haven't played OSRS or haven't played 2007 ish RuneScape since 2007. So they're like, how the f- do you train these skills? Like, I don't have silver hawk boots. How the hell do I train agility? <laughs> I'm like, a rooftop courses, baby. Um, but like, with that, you know, you have old friends who are like, I really like fishing. Everybody loves a good fishing mini game, <laughs> unless you're a RuneScape player who hates the fishing skill. Everybody loves a good fishing mini game. Throwback to, I think, episode three of this show with my might gain being infamously way too <laughs> you high. You can teach a man to fish. God, you really can. <laughs> but like if they enjoy fishing in any other game, take them to temp. Mm. Fish with them. Be like, oh yeah, you collect all these fish. You can cook them. It's super fun. You use them in combat. But like, we're going to go fight this fishing boss. And they're going to be like, there's a boss for fishing? Because like, what other game? Like skilling bosses... We are in a very weird bubble as RuneScape players because, like, Temporos and Verzik should not both be considered bosses right. on the high scores. At the same right? time. Like, Verzik like should. Like, one of those things is not like the other, <laughs> you know? Hey, cold bag. Yeah, I know. It's a, great, it's a solid upgrade. Um, so, like, for us as RuneScape players, we're like, oh, skilling bosses are so dumb. I hate training. Because we know that, like, 13 million experience is a lot of damn experience. We're only getting 2K game. That's rough, you know? But for someone who's like, oh, this is all so new to me, they could absolutely fall in love with the content. Yeah. yeah. They could be like, dude, I've never killed a fishing boss i've only just gone fishing and maybe they play temp and they don't like it because it's too click intensive it's too active they're like this is not what i want out of fishing again as runescape players there are dozens of options of things to catch Mm -hmm. as your skills go up they have divided the fishing skill now that it is with like on the on the skilling page with like small net big net like all these different options of someone who's just playing the game for the first time might look at it and go, yo, these are actually pretty cool. You know? So if they have a certain skill you think they might like, I'm using fishing as an example, kind of drive that home with members. Mm-hmm. With like giving them membership. Because if they like fishing, what else can they do? They can do fishing contest. Oh, and they can get the sense of achievement of like, yeah. oh, I want a fishing contest. That's yeah. neat. I got some fishing XP. You know, they can do maybe one of the end game goals for them. End game is like do swan song. It's a fishing quest, but you have to fight this giant kraken monster to get a new kind of fish to unlock. Mm. Then they accidentally progress their account to do swan song, <laughs> which is like, is swan song an intermediate or a master level quest? I, mean, I don't know, but it takes like sixty something smithing and sixty something fishing. So like you have to you have to play for a while, you know. The biggest thing, oh hey, in addition hold to on. it's a master level quest. Yeah. Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah, and I mean, that's kind of cool if you've never played RuneScape before to be like, hey, I did a master level quest. I think I killed the sea troll queen with my eyes closed. I have to do one small favor. Ugh. But like at the same time, I can a hundred beats per minute is like my standard at this point. Like I can sit at the table and like tap my finger a hundred beats per minute and it's not a problem anymore. Right. Yeah. Maybe I'll fluctuate between 97 and 105. <laughs> Who knows? Right. But more often than not, I, I have the rhythm. Close down. Enough. So like the game, the game at that stage, like those master level quests, like swan song it's not challenging anymore but for someone who's never played that's a super fun super cool goal to have Mm -hmm. right and but it's like that with any game any game you play where someone looks at and goes oh that's a super high level achievement and if you've been playing that game for years you're like eh kind of but not really you know that's a bias you have from playing uh from just playing the game for super long um making a new account 
and focusing on what they will want to do. Because if you ask them, what do you want to do? They're going to say, I don't know. Right. Yeah. So hopefully it's someone you know well enough to be like, hey, I think you'll find this fun. Right. When I play with my RS3 friend, we go to Temporos. You know, we go because like some skills are super easy to try. Like 50 fire making seems really difficult until you guys are just chill and making line fires for like eight minutes and then you have it unlocked, <laughs> you know? But like some of the requirements are not as hard to get to as they might seem because we know how to do it fast and we can help them do it fast. Yeah. Um, why, why I brought up raids, I guess to transition is you might have friends that really like raids. That's not realistic for a new account. No, because there's a lot of quests involved and a lot of downtime. I say downtime, but it's like you're, you're in the game killing sand crabs, probably 30 hours just to get the stats, if that's what but, you do, or Nightmare Zone. But I wouldn't... I don't think I would tell... This might be a difference of opinion between you and I. I don't think I would tell a new player to go to sand crabs if like, I knew them personally. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd be like, oh, go to sand crabs. It's the best AFK XP. Yeah, I think it might be more fun for them because I think that's part of what keeps people playing RuneScape is they play for their own sense of achievement, even if it's a stupid sense of achievement, quote unquote. Yeah. Right. Like I should not have trained level 50 to level 60 agility at Falador on my main account. I should not have done that. It was absolutely goddamn miserable. <laughs> You know how shitty that course is? Yeah, I think you have the, like, you're rank one for most laps completed at Paladore. Probably. It was before the damn lap counter, dog. I don't have a lap. I, uh, I don't know how many laps I had, but too many, right? Oh, no. But for me, this was before Hollowed Sepulchre came out. And this was, like, I was just looking at the rune light thing and being like, oh, runescape says it's only going to take 1500 laps as opposed to like 1700 laps so that's definitely going to be a time save right yeah oh oh now i know no, that's sorry. not true yeah, you're right right <laughs> and the falador course is misery but when i got to 60 i'm like oh my god we did it hell yeah let's do this i don't think i have run a lap of the falador agility course other than for the diary ever like i just it's not gonna happen because it's terrible right it's kind of but at the time stupid that it's terrible though like at the time i thought that was like that was fine like that was a good sense of achievement even if as a more advanced player i know that that's just not that's not good tack right there you know i i think guiding new players to what they might like you know and not necessarily giving them the most efficient route because like i don't know I, I don't think i would tell a new player like oh you're gonna sit on this beach for eight hours yeah and then you can start having fun right so you would probably at that point recommend slayer or you know uh, what like that's other other than slayer just killing bosses repeatedly as an as an example my brother started playing again briefly uh and he was killing hill giants and a free to play for his uh, combat XP. And it would take him like three days to get a strength level. Mind you, he's like 40 strength. So it should not be taking that long. And so I told him, you probably should go get membership and go kill sand crabs. And the, the, the reason I say that and know your audience <coughs> is because he can AFK really, really hard at work. Like he can just have his phone sitting there and he doesn't have to pay attention to it. So he was having to pay a lot of attention uh, with killing hill giants. But when I told him about sand crabs, like you can basically just leave him, like you can just leave your character there for 10 minutes. The, the aggression timer will run out and you just have to go and reset it. You know, you're not going to die. You're not going to like... You know, it's it's really easy. And so he found that to be helpful versus, you know, if your friend doesn't have a lot of downtime, they don't want to be spending the, the you know, the two or three hours they have after their kid goes to bed just killing sand crap. 
because they can't mm-hmm. do it at work or they can't, you know, they can't chill on their iPad. So yes, at that point, there's going to be other ways that they can progress that will be more fun. So this all kind of really just boils down to like, know your audience. My next one is, uh, you know, the old don't is going to be, uh, don't overhype this game. Because I, I am very, very guilty of that. I've overhyped it and it doesn't always meet expectations. Uh, I think specifically with my wife, like I told her, you're going to have so much fun. You're going to, you know, we're going to do quests together. And then it felt, you know, it fell flat kind of. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, hype it up, obviously, but don't be like, I've been playing this for like 15 years. It's the best game ever. Cause not everybody likes watching numbers go up. And that's their motivator. It is for me, but everybody's different. You know, um, they may not enjoy the grind of an MMO like this. They may not enjoy the fact that, like, I'm at 600 hours on this account and I'm barely, barely scratching the mid game. Like, eh. some people are like, I want to play for about 30 hours of a game and be done and beat it. That's why they're serial cons- uh, console gamers. Yeah. So don't overhype it. Um, my next one that I thought of whenever you're talking about raids, a good, a good like a uh, goal that you could have with your friend. So say you followed our followed our advice, and you and a friend have started accounts on Tutorial Island. You both have started playing. You're progressing. Your members, all that kind of stuff. I think a really cool goal to have for like a, a, a low level friend accounts is like let them know that there is this giant spider off in this crazy land called Zaya. And, you know, you have to go down into a dungeon. Like, you basically just go to Seracnus. That, that, is your, that is your end boss goal, is to both get a Seracnus kill. Because I think if you can get somebody to the point on their account, whether or not you guys get the, the, the gear from scratch, or you get the money to buy the gear from scratch, if you can progress your account enough to where you can effectively kill Seracnus over and over, that's a pretty that like that's not going to be, you know, a week into playing. You know, that's that's a good chunk of time and hopefully by then they'll, they'll have seen the value of playing this game and find it fun. Barrows is another one. Thank you, Elagio. Barrows is another one. You guys could just go in and send a couple Barrows runs together. That could be the goal. But any sort of like um, mid game to early late game bossing, I think, uh, could be a lot of fun. You could even uh, you could even take them to the, the the new wilderness bosses. Like Calvarion is very very easy in a group. Um, you can't kill Calvarion. In a group. Sorry, Vedion. Vedion is very very easy to kill in a group. Uh, two like mid game accounts could probably kill. Vedion. I don't know about Venonatus or, or Callisto because I haven't done them, but like Vedion, so easy. And if they get the bug, then, you know, if they get, if I keep saying bug, if they get the itch to do it, then send them to, over to Calvarion whenever you're not online. Um, yes, it's dangerous. Yes, they might die, but it's bossing. And a lot of people like bossing. Uh, skilling could be something that ends up like catching you know their attention um my recommendation for any sort of skilling goals for like new people in this game is always like either set a set a goal to get diaries done or set a base level for the account so like base 30s then work on base 40s then work on base 50s and that will progress your account enough to where you can skill hop around and still not get you know burnt out so yeah those were those are the two top of mind that i had thought of um did you have any more yeah i mean it sucks but historically telling people like it's bad practice for an mmo player to be like hey this game gets really fun after 2000 hours <laughs> yes because what is the point of playing the game that I have to effectively commit my entire life to. 
am I having more fun now doing Tob than I was when I was doing Seracnus? One kill trips? Getting the dog shit slapped out of me by them fucking blue spiders? Yeah, absolutely right. I am. Do I have the same sense of achievement when I do well in Tob versus when I get a Barrows piece? Because that Barrows is the only boss I can kill? Absolutely I do. Right? Because it was progression that felt good at the time. If you give them the expectation that everything prior to this point is not going to be fun, they are not going to have fun. That is, Very true. remember that for any new player you bring in, whether it's a sibling, a coworker, a classmate, a significant other, if you tell them, hey, this game gets really good once you get to Tombs of a Masket. This game gets really good when you have base 70s and we can go to God Wars together. There's no point in getting there, right? It's like me saying, hey, season eight of Game of Thrones is the best TV you'll ever watch, but the first seven seasons suck balls, <laughs> but you have to watch them all to get there. First of all, not true in real life. Season eight is a monstrosity. <laughs> Second of all, why would I want to watch Game of Thrones if that's the point? Right. If I have to go through 60 hours of television that I'm not going to enjoy just to see one scene of a dragon that's super cool, what's the f***ing point? Yeah. You're going to put me through a year and a half worth of work for a 40-minute raid <laughs> that I'm not going to MVP in because I don't know how to do the raid and you do? That's not fun. Absolutely. Right? You have to put every stage of the account as something that's enjoyable right when you start off you start on an adventure together you talk about pets you talk about quests right you talk about skills you talk about fun activities things you can do together if you can get them interested in it they will do their own research if they're not a video game player like my mom there is no way i could get my mom to play runescape because my mom doesn't give a shit about video games. Every time I talk to my mom about XP Waste, kind of side tangent, she goes, I'm so, like, I'm so happy you do it, and I'm so proud of you, but like, I still can't listen to any of the episodes, because like, I just, I try, Matthew, but like, I, just, I just don't get it. I'm like, Mom, <laughs> it's, it's okay. Like, when I tell you I got no expectations that you would watch this show, I'm not offended, because you're not going to get it, and you're not going to enjoy it. So like, that's okay. I'm not trying to gatekeep my mom out of RuneScape, but again, I'm realistic. If I was like, hey, mom, if you play this game for like five years, you might think my show is good. Like, <laughs> that's not worth it for her. Like, I'm just going to send her a T-shirt. And she's going to think it's cool. Yeah, you know, like absolutely. that's that's, you know, good enough. Um, so I think stressing how fun the journey is at every stage is important. We have a friend. He was originally a friend of a friend, but now he's just, you know, one of the boys. His name is Mac, and he was brought into a friend group by one of our buddies, Arionix. And I think Arionix was like, hey, the rating and the group PVM is cracked in RuneScape. It is so much fun. So every time Mac is like, I'm trying to gain XP, what boss can I kill? We're in VC with like max players, infernal capers, people with six accounts, people who have been playing since 2002. We're like, those two things don't add up. Like, earning XP and killing bosses are almost mutually exclusive. Fun fact for all you guys out there bossing is some of the worst XP in the game, which is so for combat backwards. skills. <clears throat> it is, it's the worst XP in the game. But the counter is, it's way more money than training at Sand Crabs. You know, um, Iron Otis says, are you saying people shouldn't play RuneScape because it's slow and boring? I don't think people shouldn't play RuneScape because it's slow and boring. I think you most shouldn't remind people, them. most people, if you tell them you have to do something that's incredibly slow and boring in order to have fun, they're not going to want to do it because it's probably not that fun, you know? Right. Like, with the only real exception being, like, the classic, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, earn your keep and make money nonsense, then you can have fun when you're in your 50s, 
you know, because you work your whole life and now you have enough money saved up. Other than like that, most people don't participate in things that aren't enjoyable for payoff, mm -hmm. you know? And like, there is, of course, a balance to that. Like, if you're an athlete, practice is usually not fun. You're tired, you're getting yelled at, you're making a series of mistakes because you don't know what your coach is trying to teach you, which is why you're practicing it. And then the fun part is the competition, right? At the end of the day, you still enjoy going to practice because you enjoy playing that sport, right? It's not quite the same as like, you have to sit in this brown shithole for 900 hours to get the level requirement to do a 20 minute quest. Like yeah. Don't don't lead with that basically. Right. That is I don't know. That that is like that's just where I'm at with it. Another big thing is do it with them. Like you say, "Oh, do it like if they're offline, they can go do this." That's they're going to have fun doing content you both enjoy together. Right. If you got to cut trees together, f*** it. Cut some trees together. Train stupid AFK combat together. Mm -hmm. Like, if they're like, oh, I found out about these Ankus. I want to kill them. Maybe we'll make some money. Just f***ing go with them. Just kill them, yeah. yeah. Because they are going to have, like I said, regardless of who it is, they're going to have so much more fun if you kind of like, I'm going to use the term suck it up and go with them because like we know that shit's not fun. We know Ankus don't make you any money. <laughs> what the f*** do you mean? You get like 4k per Anku task. What are you talking about? <laughs> make money. Whatever. But if they want to do it, that's enjoyable for them, right? Yeah. And eventually you'll be like, let's turn up the heat a little bit and let me introduce you to demonic gorillas. You know, <laughs> like we're going to we're going to mix things up a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Do the content with them. Do the skilling with them. Do the mini bosses with them. <sighs> this is a weird line between don't gatekeep and don't throw them into content they are not ready for. I would never take a noob to Vediam. The big bosses will slap the dog shit out of someone with base 50s mm -hmm. who has never played this game before. We can kill Vediam. Vedion is easy in a group with max combat mains. Vedion is easy in a group, or Venonatus is easy in a group when you've killed it literally a thousand times. Right. But it's just like Zalra. You know? Even I know how to do Zalra. I've done it 1,200 times or something like that at this point. I couldn't do it on my Iron Man because I didn't have the gear or the stats. And by gear and stats, I mean, like, I didn't have anti-venoms. I had, like, 70 range, mm -hmm. you know, 70 magic. Imagine having those bad of stats and not knowing what's happening. Right. There's a reason we shout out Zolra every week, because it's a miserable experience <laughs> to learn, you know? So do the content with them. Learn the content with them. Or even if it's not a matter of, like, don't pretend you don't know how to play the game. That's another thing. Don't right. don't make it seem like this is also your first time playing. They know you have a maxed main. <laughs> Which is another reason why they're going to appreciate you playing on your little shitter mid-game account with them. Because they think it's fun. And you think it's fun. Right? It's it's less about the gameplay and more about like the personal connection. I feel like I'm having a damn session with you guys right now. <laughs> it's not about... Like, show them the things that are fun to do when they get to the points where they're like, what's next? Yeah. Right? Kind of guide them on a fun adventure based on what you think would be enjoyable for them. Do it together. Don't, like Michael said, don't overhype the end of the game. Because, again, God, that's misery. You yeah. know? Yeah, because, like, and setting the expectation that you're only going to have fun... And it's only going to be fun into, when you get to this point, and then it may not be fun. That's gonna sh that's gonna shut down any motivation that they may have had to play. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I had a point. Yeah, I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything worse. 
than being like, dude, Venonatus, that's my girl, favorite boss in the game. You're going to love it. And your first trip at Venonatus, this Darth Vader three key red skull have an ass motherfucker rolls in and kills your friend for everything they own. They're never playing this game again. <sighs> so like really, really hard to hype up the end game. You can hype it up as like, I, I don't know. There's, there's, there's a lot of really good ways to go about getting people involved but we're so used to try to get people motivated who already play RuneScape, you know, who already have a thousand hour commitment under their belt. Yeah. That we're like, dude, just get 75 or get 77 RuneCrafting, get the diary done. And then you are cheering easy, easy peasy. Seven. That's easier said than done. You know, I want to, it's easier said than done. But like when you're, when you're one task away from the Lumbridge elite diary. Oh, true. That's not a hard push at all. No. When you're like, dog, this rune crap, we're making air runes and shit at Falador. You know how this is really boring? It becomes super chill in about 1.5 million XP. <laughs> and they're like, 1.5 million? 40 hours, Whoa. 60 hours from now. Oh. Uh, coming back to your point about like, don't pretend this is your first time playing. I think that's great advice. But I would also encourage you, the listener, to like encourage your friend to 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 look things up for themselves if it's relevant um if you're like obviously if you're teaching them how to do guardians of the rift don't be like hey watch a guide and then come back that's kind of a dick move but mm -hmm. uh if they're like hey so how do i get a red berry pie for such and such quest like hey you know if you go on the wiki buy it on the grand exchange <laughs> sure <laughs> Um, buy another grand exchange but there's definitely items or things you know methods that it's very helpful for them to be self-sufficient in some things but i challenge you to do that with them do it with the them point. yes go pick red berries south of Varrock. go <laughs> kill goblins till you get chef hats if they don't want to buy it themselves yeah if you made them play iron man mode you sick f you're obligated to do this <laughs> with them right yeah but if you're playing mainscape together and they're like oh might it be fun to earn it myself you're like funny enough it will be but be very careful what you wish for yeah or you will fall into helmet territory and you will hate it <laughs> um but like yeah. i say playing actively very actively on my iron man account you know i'm not i'm not gonna forget my roots okay it's okay xp wasters I'm yeah not he's not gonna forget i'm not a, i'm not, a, I'm not a hell i still rep the no helm what do you want from me um <laughs> but i think the point still stands like don't become their wiki for them because that can get to the point where, hey, say if you're unavailable, like you're at work and you can't extra answer a text, like they're just not going to, it's going to, it's going to kill the motivation, I think, for them. And I, it's a them problem. No, no. I'm just saying from experience, like uh, my brother, God love him, he basically quit playing and it's fine. He's playing other games. He just got kind of bored of RuneScape. But he would call me. He would call me. I'm at work and ask me a question that was like two seconds away from being answered on the wiki. One, that's like, that's not a great use of my time having to like answer a phone call at work to figure out, hey, what, uh, what rune, you know, what pickaxe do I use next? I'm 41 mining. Brother, it's rune. So that kind of stuff, uh, that stuff's easy. But there are certain things I think that having them be more self-sufficient can help. But always be open point, for questions. Just, yes, I'm not saying point, cut them like off. Show them what the wiki is, mm -hmm. and like again, assuming this person plays video games, because if you're trying to get a non-gamer to play RuneScape, good luck to you, my friend. Because I don't know. Again, I'm not trying to gatekeep anyone can play and enjoy this game and maybe this is how they start liking video games as they play runescape and they fall in love with it and this is their you've started them down the dark path of becoming a degenerate till two o'clock in the morning playing games right but likely you guys share a common interest of video games mm -hmm. and it's likely that at some point in the realistically average 25 to 30 years they've been alive because like I've met, I think, two children that play OSRS. Like, 
we don't meet kids ever playing this game, which is so nice, by the way. <laughs> um, they've gone to a wiki once or twice. Yeah, they've looked up an achievement guide. They've looked up the best money making methods, the best fish to catch in Stardew. They've looked up Minecraft builds. They've done something. Mm -hmm. So they're like. At some point, they're going to go, how the f*** do you do this in RuneScape? <laughs> and they're going to type, they're going to make the mistake of typing old school RuneScape, not OSRS. Uh, <laughs> old school RuneScape scimitars. And it will just pop up and they'll figure out the order and they'll think the dragon one is cool. And then it will start them down a dark path of monkey madness one. And at that point, they're screwed because <laughs> there's no going back. You've got them there forever. Be proud of that, but know that that's, that's blood's on your hands. You did that. <laughs> <laughs> you did that to them. Um, you did that. Yeah. Questcape is a great goal for people, too. It takes a long time, and there's a lot of things. There's a lot of steps in there, but I've seen so many people recently that have like gotten tandem Questcapes, like friends who've done it together, mm -hmm. and I think that's just so wholesome. Now, Questcape that's not is what a lot you, of fun. Like, don't start them out saying hey day one we're on tutorial island baby we're getting our quest capes together like save that one for for a little down the road quest cape is a lot of fun if you like read the quests together yeah like, what first hooked me into quests was biohazard the first time i did it biohazard is not a hard quest to do because that quest it, it like ends with a conversation with the king but the big climax of the quest is like the plague is fake. Mm. You're like, dun, dun, what? dun. Literally, it's the dun, dun, dun moment in the quest. So, like, do the quest, read it together. And then, if you get people like interested in the storylines, fun emotional storylines keep people invested. Yeah. You know, unlike what they did in Game of Thrones, where they just destroyed everyone's character arcs to bring it back to what I was talking about earlier. A lot of the stories progress really well in RuneScape. Like so for us, it takes years. I think Song of the Elves, Morning's End Part Two, and Song of the Elves. I think there was like a seventeen-year gap, like twelve-year. Some there's a big gap between Map Two and Song of the Elves, mm -hmm. right? For them, just a little bit of training. Yeah, you know, a couple months at most to to learn the next part. Or maybe they watch ahead and they get, oh, I don't have any crystal charges left on my pickaxe. I don't know what that means. That's dumb though. Um, you're, oh, hold on. Are you using a crystal pick at Motherload Mine? Why is my crystal pick 15 mil? Why are tool seeds so expensive? Come on, dude. Because they nuked all the Zolcano bots. I don't know. Are tool seeds that expensive? I think they are. No shot. I don't know. Who knows? But no, you should not be using a crystal pick at Motherload Mine. They're Come on. 14 mil? Holy. That's not the point of this conversation. <laughs> Ugh. I might as well buy a dragon pickaxe. Sweet Jesus, dog. Well, there's nothing you can do now. You've you've gone down the path of making the crystal pick. Just throw some charges in there. I mean, I, I'm a maniac. I think I one shard. Sixty mil. <laughs> I have a sixty mil cash deck, Michael. I'll just buy another dragon pickaxe. What are you talking about? No, no, no. <laughs> it's crystal shards. You don't need another dragon pickaxe, Michael. Do you not I have a dragon buy pickaxe? A Michael, I'm listening. I will buy another dragon pickaxe and keep them both oh, in my bank. Listen, dude, I thought so you were I saying that you were like having a charge <coughs> crystal pick with a dragon pick. It's not how it works. No, I am aware of how the crystal pickaxe okay. works because I've main handed it for years. <clears throat> but you know, uh -huh. <laughs> so anyways, back to the topic. Back to the topic. Hand. Quests. Back I, to the topic. At I 100% agree with you. Reading Get the dialogue. The Get them Quest Helper. We said this last week or two weeks ago. Get Quest Helper. But please, for the love of like all the RuneScape gods, like read the dialogue. I did... Don't get them Quest Helper, though. No, what? get Quest Helper, but read the dialogue. That's, it's a, it's no, a very easy you, thing to do. You are their Quest Helper. Oh, my gosh. At that, At that point, you're just like, let's go on the wiki together. That's just an extra step for the same goal. Like the same, same result. I don't know. You have your opinion. I have mine. If you want to give them quest helper, I don't think it's that bad of a thing. But the point, the point is read the dialogue. So 
Ichthar Ichtharlin's little helper. I, can't, I still can't say that. Ichtharlin. Ichtharlin's little helper and contact. Two of like very seemingly unimportant desert quests, right? They set up beneath cursed sands. They set up the pantheon, and me as a thirty-year-old man playing this game for twenty years, I didn't know that. Like, I didn't know that Temekin and Elidness and Ichtharlin and the Devourer were all set up in these seemingly unimportant quests. I'm reading through the dialogue, I'm like, wait. This priest is giving me the history lesson here. He's talking about the Pantheon and like why Menaphos is, is uh, shut down and like the political divide. And like, I'm also thinking, I'm been, I've done this raid that has to do with these Egyptian gods many times and had no idea that it wasn't just some random thing that they thought. Like, they put a lot of effort and a lot of thought into the lore in this game and the least you could do is read about it i say that as somebody who got a quest cape basically by space barring my way through it i was a i was a slayer music stan until i learned that the lore in this game is actually deep and actually like good reading now is it going to take you probably three or four times longer than what you probably think doing a quest should take yeah but if you enjoy lore and you enjoy storytelling they're really deep stories and people really just don't give quests due diligence enough that they deserve i'll i'll get off my soapbox about quests all that to say let's just say that was, that was, one, that was a hell of a rant there Michael. all that to say uh oh 66 agility um like Go through the quest with them. Talk about it, you know, because you, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I guarantee you, the listener, if you're going through quests with your friend, you haven't read them yet. And it'll be the first time for both of you to learn that the Egyptian pantheon was mentioned in contact and that, you know, it's going to get you really excited for the next quest that you do after you get 62 <coughs> agility and you're actually going to be able to see these gods and you're actually going to be be able to experience fighting them in a raid together. So, read the dialogue, read read their quest. Just don't space bar it. Yes, get quest helper because it's very convenient, and it's going to give you the options that you can, uh, like it's going to give you all the items on the side. It's going to let you know when you have them, the ones you don't have. The wiki will do that for you, but it's just an extra step. Quest helper bad for new accounts. Ah, oh, see. So, are okay. I'm going to ask you genuinely. Would you recommend using the wiki, yeah. or would you recommend for them just to try and do the quest no guide at all? I mean, okay. So, I think you're missing what I'm saying. I am missing it. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> so, I'm telling you not to use quest helper because what's the fucking point of reading the dialogue? What's the point of learning about the quest when, like, oh, if I can get there, everyone, regardless of whether they play the game or not, is going to want the rewards faster if they know there's a faster way to do it with this quest helper plugin. Yeah. Everyone is going to do that. I do that, and I love the quest dialogue. I did Beneath Cursed Sands took me, like, four hours the first time. It took me four hours to do AKD. It took me, four, it took me three hours to read the dialogue, and then what felt like an eternity to kill Vance from Claws when Sins of the Father came out, right? I like that. I did those quests in, like, 30 minutes flat with Quest Helper. I know what happens. I don't care. I'm burning through it. Mm -hmm. The reason I say don't use Quest Helper is because if the goal is to get them invested in the story, Quest Helper, they're going to burn through it. They have the wiki that will tell them what items they need. That's how I got my quest gate, is you use the wiki. It works just as well, right? There's little check boxes. It's pretty neat, right? <clears throat> it shows the steps, and if you're doing the steps together, again, you've probably done the quests before, so... Other than, like, the light puzzles and shit, it's not like they're going to get too stopped up doing most of the quests without Quest Helper or without a wiki if you do it with them. 
I think Quest Helper is a wonderful plugin. I think it is. It's very helpful for people who are just trying to power through and get it done. And if you and whoever you bring into this game are just trying to get the quest cape done, then by all means, use the quest helper. Feel free. If you're missing the point of what I'm saying, which is get them invested in the stories of the game to keep them around, because what well, anyone who's going for the quest cape right now, what's the goal? What's the goal after quest cape? Max cape. Achievement Diary Cape. I don't know. So two two ethereal capes that take literal f***ing years to get? Yeah. What's the goal? I, What's the goal? <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. If you rush a goal just to have it, you don't realize what you do after the fact, right? I had to say, I got my Infernal Cape, and people were like, now what? I'm like, I don't know, play a different game? Uh, <laughs> that was my goal. Yeah. Like, that's that's the problem you're going to face, right? You get people invested in the games, in the stories, in the things you unlock with the quests. I don't know. I'm a little more biased towards quests, but at the end of the day, at least for me, regardless of what you do, what you tell them, what you give them, what you don't give them, advice, money, gear, doesn't matter. Do it with them. Start a new account. Start on the same footing. Do it with them because if you bring your kitted scythe main account to kill hill giants with them it's not going to be fun for either one of right you. absolutely you can't like you could have a main account and dumb it down but at the end of the day you're still hitting 30s you're still hitting 40s with a brune scimitar but but even then like that just feels bad Yeah, it does that no that feels bad as someone who like if I'm playing a, a level-based progression game with someone, the, the few times I have played Destiny 2, it's felt like shit. Because I have the lowest power level possible. Mm -hmm. And I play with my friends who have a much higher power level than I do because they've been playing the game for years. So they have all this super cracked equipment. And I'm getting my shit pushed in by enemies. I'm getting my shit pushed in by other players in multiplayer. It's not fun. Or if we go to the low level areas, I don't get to kill anything. Because my friends are killing everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So like, don't take your main account to do anything. Unless it's like you need to protect someone in the wilderness, you need to scout somewhere, mm -hmm. you need to box something so they don't die. Right. Like if they're really worried about dying during like I don't know. What's that Waterfall? quest? Waterfall quest. Go ahead and like box some of the giants if that's a concern. So like they don't have that problem. Go box shit in the stronghold of security while you two get your 10k together. Like you can open two client windows, dog. Like I know that works. I really would be against playing like, actively playing on your main account with them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, I'm a little bit more biased in the emotional end of it because I think the emotional end and the human connection end is going to be at the end of the day what keeps people playing but that's the reason i still play because i mean lord knows after a while you stop giving a shit about whatever goals you have and you're just hanging out with the boys yeah. in the interim yeah so if sure. there's no connection they're gonna not gonna feel motivated to stick around so i think my last one and we could probably go to break very simple um get them a discord account like this game is not great for social uh, for socializing and chatting and in you know there's certain plugins like the party plugin makes things really easy for like figuring out what gear they have or what prayer you know like bossing stuff but like get them a discord account make a server if you have to jump in vc screen share that's a big one screen sharing could be very helpful but i agree with you actually do it together do it together make it a make it a group effort if there's more than one of you, or sorry, if there's more than two of you, even better, you know? Forget group Iron Man. Just play together. <laughs> or make a group Iron Man account together. That at the end of the day, it's 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 about what is fun for you and your friends. You know? If you guys I think it would be super fun to like play D and D style where you role play playing this game. I feel like that would be kind of fun if you can figure that out. There's a lot of different ways to play this game. Like, 
You'd have arbitrary restrictions together. You'd have them watch Swampletics and then and then go and do it. Like that could be a movie night, you know, watch a couple Swampletics episodes and then go and do a snowflake account together. At the end of the day, it's about doing it together. So that little baby birdie can fly and someday have its own wings. <laughs> and then you'll have a friend to play RuneScape. That's the end goal here. Friends are good. And join TNL because there's a lot of friends in there. Is it break time though? <laughs> it seems like a wonderful letting baby birds fly or whatever break <laughs> segment. So folks, we're going to head to break and we will see you after this. Howdy folks, my name is Prospect Percy and we're looking for some fine young adventurers who want to hone and grind their skills. Now if this sounds like you, then you've got to come on down to Motherload Mine. Down here, we got everything you need to train up them gathering and artisan skills. We got hammers, we got pickaxes, we got dwarves, we got other adventurers, we got a bank and we got some baby moles. We've even got Grandma! Howdy Grandma! Howdy Percy! You probably go come on down here looking for ores. Let me tell you, we got all sorts. We got coal, we got gold, we got mithril, we got adamantine, and even runite. And where do all them there ores come from? Say it with me, fellas. Pay dirt! That's right, folks. Them there walls are lined with pay dirt. Mine a bag full and toss them on the conveyor belt. Watch it go down the water. Say hi to the baby mole for me. Once it hits the sack, go mine some more. Load your pay dirt on till the bag is full and fix that dang wheel. When your sack is all full and you're picking through them rocks, you might find some of them there gold nuggets. I'll take them off your hands for all sorts of goodies like bags of gems and bags for coal and bags for more pay dirt. I've even got some fancy mining clothes because who doesn't love a fish and fashion skate? Cart your way down to Felidor to the Muddleload Mine just next to the mining guild to make all your pay dirt dreams come true. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial because I know that I sure did. It's time, folks. It's Patreon time. It is, the, it is the time where we shout out our lovely patrons, specifically in the KBD tier. But if you're in the wise old man tier, there's a thing on screen right now for you. It has everyone's names, which should be updated. Everyone should be there. Should be there. Spelled correctly. Everyone should be 100% good to go. So special shout out to the wise old men, some of whom are joining us in the recording booth chat today. Shout out to the gnome child. Shout out to the party Pete tier folks. But a special shout out to Broic70, my dad, hi dad, Cloud Kicker, Dicky Bird, EXP Enjoyer, Imby Jones, Legend Gary, Lil Drakey, The Lord Jake himself, Mark, aka Ice Steam, Mike Oxmall, MT Birchfield, Rylithian, Satanbot666, who just followed me on Twitter, Skuman92, Spartan Fire, Taco Ninja, The Big G Jordy, The Crayola Cram, Toast No Toast, and Tiz Talk Coots. These people comprise the King Black Dragon tier. And that is why they are getting a special shout out. You guys are awesome. We appreciate the support. A lot of you have been with us in the KBD tier for a really long time. And it's insane. So thank you. Again, when we first started the Patreon, we didn't think anyone would support the, the KBD tier, but you guys have, and you continue to. And for that, you deserve our many thanks, which we love you for. Thank you, guys. It really does. Your support really does mean the world to us. Um, but if you want to support us in any way, shape, or form, because we have tiers that are cheaper than the KBD tier, right? Head over to patreon.com forward slash XP waste, and you can subscribe at any tier we have available. I think, like I said, $1 is the lowest they would allow us to go. So, or don't. I'm not your mom. You don't have to pay for our love. You're not my Just mom. show up and like the show. You, we love you guys anyway for listening. Because our listenership has gone pretty well, too. How close are we to 500K, Michael? We're like at 487,000 total. So, not yeah. far off. So we're we're almost to five hundred thousand streams lifetime. That's a that's going to be a pretty damn big achievement. So whether or not you support on Patreon, you guys are helping us out by just existing and enjoying our content. We do appreciate you. 
Shirts have been shipped, baby. They've been shipped all over the place. People have been getting them. If you got your shirt, post it. Let us know. You know, I, I think they're a pretty cool design. I haven't, I don't know if you've sent mine, Michael, because you're sending me like four shirts. Yeah, I haven't sent I it like. yet. That's whatever you do, send mine. I'll be sure to rock it on the next episode. Nice. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be exciting stuff. Fun fact my name is not on there. Technically it is, <laughs> but it's Oxy's dad. Like, I, I'm like, I am not on there as like a, I as still, a name, like, which... you never subscribed even to the gnome child. I thought, like I'm on there I because I any... actually subscribed. I didn't just put my name on there for vanity. Dog, reasons. I didn't have any money to give this show when we first started. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's I, didn't any, I didn't have any ducats lying around <laughs> to like essentially give myself. So I never, true. I never subscribed to Patreon. And yeah, so if you look at my name in Discord, you'll won't find any Patreon roles because I don't have any because I've never actually financially supported the Patreon. Which makes it all the more special that you guys do. Because, you know, I couldn't fork over the ducats at the time when we started. And you guys can. And that's super cool that some of you guys have been on board with the Patreon since we launched it. So, appreciate the hell out of you guys. But, like I said, <clears throat> patreon.com forward slash XP waste. The shameless plugs for our finances are over. And it's time to get into the fun stuff. Ooh. What do we think, Michael? Let's do it. It's time to kick it off with a community question, baby. Let's go. Community question time. Uh, Last week, we asked you guys if you made a clan in the game, what would you call it? Starting with our Spotify replies, Nate says, Silly Zilly Simps. Silly Zilly Simps. All one word. No spaces. Moving on, Migrol says, I'd like to call my clan uh, from my French TV show called Camelot. It's spelled K-A-A-M-E-L-O-T-T. A A great one, by the way. So my clan name is Les Simis. Yes. Thank you, Migrel. You posted a different language. Which translates translates to the half crusty. Oh, okay. One one more time, Michael. What was that called? Les Simis Creotasantes. I don't know. It's terrible French. (laughs) I'm just going off of what I know. Grooch says, Loop Beam Lobsters. Shout out to the Bingo Boys. Side note, as someone who is terrible at this game, Oxy is 100% correct in saying combat achievements should give rewards, but not the cosmetics. Boo! Boo! (laughs) Mr. Mellon says, Burnout Incoming would be my clan name. Loving the show, boys. Thank you, Mr. Mellon. Burnout Incoming? That's a good name. (laughs) Uh, Caleb says, oxymorons. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Uh, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if Caleb was, is saying that because they think like that's, that's like the, the funny end, or if they were on the oxymorons bingo team, and I only know them by their screen right. name. We're, we're going off of whatever <clears throat> is on your guys' Spotify account. So if you didn't make your Spotify account with your RuneScape name, uh, good luck. Like our next one, Young Mac says, I'd call it, uh, sorry, I'd name it after my cat, Dill Pickle. Oh, <laughs> cute. Iron Otis says, four, XC Waste and XP Waste with two more ending in ERs just to troll you guys and maybe make some IRL bank if you guys ever have to separate from TNL. Oh no. Just kidding. Uh, love the show. Keep it up. So he's going to steal the name XU Waste and EXP Waste and, uh, and make us buy it from him. That's, that's the move. I don't know if you guys know this, but on Vine, whenever Vine came, had, like, allowed you to have your own custom URL back in like 2016, I stole Miley Cyrus. So my my to get to my profile, it was vine.com slash Miley Cyrus. And she never contacted me, oddly enough. Next one is coming here. Uh, next, we have Mock Cat. I probably wouldn't make a clan. I've done so in other games, but I didn't have any good reason to. So if I had to, it would probably just be will drop items or item wasters or item despawn timer. Item despawn. Item despawn timer. Item despawn timer. I like that one, yeah. 
Item D spawn timer is pretty good. Oh, Iron Otis in the recording booth chat, he clarified. <coughs> he says it would be XP wasters or EXP wasters. Okay. That makes sense. Because I think XP wasters is probably taken as far as a clan name goes. Taco Dog says the Order of the Mole would be a great clan name. We would have an official dress code of monk's robes and the monk outfit. And everyone has to have the hair and pet following them at all clan events. <laughs> Those are some uh, some pretty big like requirements, man. That's a steep requirement to get in. But Lord Maticus says I would have to reuse my name from way back in the day. Ass kickers. A Z Z kickers with a Z on the end. <laughs> Ass kickers. Love it. Um Real Crazy says the Gillinor Madhouse. Which kind of fits with their name. I love it. The Gillinor Men. Real crazy. Real crazy. <coughs> Broviat Union. This is coming from Jankinis. Jankinis. It's spelled J A A A N K I N S S. Like Katniss, but Jankinis. But the Broviat Union, that, that's actually a pretty fun name. And last, we have on the Spotify replies, clan name would be TWL, which stands for Team With Lives. Will be the most empty clan in the world as everyone's too busy IRL. So they're the clan with lives, but nobody's online because they have lives. And they're a direct competition with Team No Life. Anyway, thank you to everyone who uh, answered on Spotify. Moving over to our YouTube replies. 10,000 slugs says slugscape or oxy foot picks. Love it. That's 12 characters. That's long enough. <laughs> oxy feet picks is oxy long enough. For, it's long enough for a, a in game name, too. Oh. So. <laughs> Busco Beep says I would call it EXP waste. EXP period waste period. Good luck with that. Jordy says uh dinge gins or waddles and he wrote this at 3 a.m <laughs> apparently all right guys that is it that's a community question that's going to do it for our community question thank you so much everybody who answered if you want to answer this week's question it will be what have you told your friend to get them to play runescape that like that failed what did you say that failed to get your friend to play RuneScape. What did you what say is, that made them what quit? Is the, what is the worst possible way to get someone to play Old Yeah, Sports? basically. Like, what did you say <laughs> that, uh, that whatever Roxy said, what's the worst possible way to get someone? You can answer that. <laughs> you can answer that question in the community question section on Spotify or the pinned comment of this YouTube video. My dear co host friend, brethren, bearded buddy, what is your, what is your section? You got the, you got the you got the combat achievements and the. I'll just stop talking. It's your turn. It's a it's achievement of the week is what Michael is trying to say. Words are hard right I now. Think, <laughs> I was gonna say I don't know what I don't know who like there's a gas leak in Michael's room or something. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> he's is that fig bar man. So it's okay, buddy. I'll take it from here. Okay, uh, it's achievement <laughs> of the week time, folks. <coughs> So, kicking things off with the miscellaneous category, we got three quest capes this week. Ooh. Loves to spooch, not the same as loves to spooge, as far as I know, because this person appears to be new in Discord. So, unless loves to spooge got a new Discord account, we have someone who's loves to spooch now. So, we have spooge and spooch, mm. and spooch got their quest cape. But speaking of duo quest capes, Radiant and Steve Slut. Both got their quest capes this week together Ooh. at the same time, which I always just think is a lot of fun to see when two people get them at the same time. Additionally, this week, as far as capes in the miscellaneous category go, Bob Dole, not the real one, or maybe the real one, but I think he died a long time ago. Bob Dole got his achievement diary cape. So arguably the most convenient cape in the whole damn game <clears throat> before the max cape. Because like the diary perks are cracked. So congratulations to you. Moving on up to the combat achievements section. Pretty light in the combat achievements. You guys weren't feeling particularly violent this week. But still, 
we have some good stuff. So we're earning their first ever fire cape with literally like four minutes left until a nerd log, oh. by the way. It's like five hours and 56 minutes and 30 something seconds. The Chungaroo clutched up and got his first ever fire cape. That would have been devastating to be at Jad and get nerd logged for your first cape. Devastating. But like I said, he clutched up and he did it. So he's got his first cape, and I would imagine he took the screenshot and promptly got nerd logged right after that. <laughs> <clears throat> Some more firsts this week. Folk Bear got their first Zolra kill, and Infamous Boy got their first Gauntlet kill. Shout out to Infamous Boy, Ooh. who is on... Uh, it was, uh, oh my god, speaking of words being difficult. Bingo no Helm, my most recent bingo team. I'm like, yeah, bingo team from the last one. And I blanked on the name of my own team. <laughs> But additionally, we've got some people earning some more fun stuff. Both Rosgin and Yaharis got their fang kits this week. People have been cracking off fang kits solo. Like, I don't know what's in the water in the rating discords. Y'all have been going crazy. I did one 420 level raid with the yellow Karis mm -hmm. within the last couple of weeks. I don't think I've had a worse experience in a raid since I was learning Chambers of Zarek. That was such a turnoff to that level of content that I'm like, man, I want to do maybe that. Maybe I won't get a fan <laughs> kit. Oh, no. So like, <clears throat> so the fact that y'all are just like burning through these fan kits is hella impressive to me because it just for me it feels super unattainable to do a 500. So good on you guys. We have two people who achieved their master combat diaries this week. We have Mima. And I stress the meme part of Mima very hard because Mima is now uh, the proud owner of the Versic Vatur Slayer Helm and the Fire Max Cape. Shout out to our boy Mima for getting the Master Combat Diaries done. Additionally, friend of the clan 2277 got his Master Combat Diaries done. I don't know what task he got it on, but he got hella rewarded for it as he got the Ancestral Robe Top Omelet combo for getting the wow. Master Combat Diaries. He got Omelet and a lot of money. So I don't know if it was a solo or a speed time, but whatever it was, he got some ducats and he got a new pet. Huge. So <clears throat> huge for the account, truly. Congratulations to the both of you on having the Verzik Helm, which like, I think the Verzik Helm is the worst of the three Helms. I think it goes Verzik, Jad, Zuck, right? Because mm -hmm. like, I, per, I think the look of the Jad Helm is better, but the Zuck Helm just has such a powerful aura that like it's way cooler than the Jad Helm. With the horns and shit, yeah. I think it's it's just way cooler. If I'm being honest, I think the Jad Helm looks the best for a if you're like as a Slayer Helm. The the Zuck Helm to me doesn't go with anything. Like just feels out of place, but it, it holds such a weight of this is the Grandmaster Helm. That's what makes it cool. But if, if we're just going yeah. off of looks, Verzik is cool, but the problem is it doesn't go anything. It doesn't just, just like... Oh, there's there's good fits for the Verzik. Yeah. I've seen some good fits with it, but I think I think you're right. It, the, as far as the Slayer helmet looks, like there's like shit on top of the Verzik helmet. Yeah. Like over the... Like I think the stuff over the, the eyes of the Verzik helm for me makes it the one that looks the worst. Yeah. But I think the Zuck helm goes with all the other like power flex items in the game like the zuck helm the fang kit the blood scythe the infernal max cape the kitted ancestral like maybe color coordinated wise it doesn't always look the best but if you have all that shit in your inventory at the same time like okay so this guy's a game <laughs> right like they they play the hell out of this game that's that's kind of what all that says to me as a player but you know so congratulations to you guys on earning your master combat achievements Closing out this week with the skilling achievements. Russ of Fury achieved a 99 prayer. Toaster Bath achieved 99 crafting. Replin Wolf with 99 farming. Mech NG with one of the three worst skills in the game down with 99 mining. The Rep Dog with 99 farming. Elagio with 99 fletching. Tacomanian with 99 prayer. Targor with 99 fire making. Doom Bar also with 99 prayer. I don't know what, again, was in the water that y'all were buying bones and heads, but a lot of y'all got 99 prayer this week. 
Skuma92 got 99 farming. Dr. Gerbert, I don't know why, but I love that name. I like the way it rolls off the tongue. Dr. Gerbert got 99 woodcutting. And finally today, Strom got his first ever 99 in TOA with 99 hit points. That's going to close things out for Achievement of the Week. I'll scroll up to Levels and Achievements. Oh, there's not even a new post in Levels and Achievements according to Discord. So I don't have to scroll up and see if anyone did anything while we were recording. Thank you guys for posting about your achievements. I don't know why I'm thanking you for it. Because, I mean, it's cool. Like, it shouldn't be an expectation. Just, just show us the cool stuff you did. You know? Very proud of all of you this week. A lot of cool stuff was done, right? But if you want to tell us about something awesome that you did... Go ahead and head over to our Discord, discord.gg forward slash OSRSTNL. Post about your achievements. We say it every week, whether it's 1500 total level or a Zuck Helm, right? We don't care. Post about it. We want to see the cool stuff you guys are doing. We also, as we say every week, have objectively the best RuneScape Discord in the world. We're growing pretty rapidly. People are active in all channels. Let's see. Yep, all the channels are bumping today. <laughs> Raiding, bossing, general VC, they're all bumping today. So come hang out. Truly, I, I don't, again, call me biased, but I don't think you'll regret it. I think, I think you'll have a blast. But yeah, that's, that's the plug for the Discord. Come hang out. Michael, it is time. It is time. Every week, <laughs> it is time. It's not even like the final hurdle of the show, because no. I think you and I both love this segment. So I it's do. not even like it's a challenge to do. It's like the last hurrah of every XP Waste episode. It is fun question time. Woo! Do we have a fun question this week? It looks like we do. Uh, and this is posted in our fun questions Discord channel. If you're a patron of the Discord, you have access to this channel. Uh, let's see. It comes from Dinosaur. They said, who has both a sick ass name and a sick ass profile picture. Wait, hold on. What's the profile picture? Hey, yo, that's sick. It's a freaking T-Rex. Anyway, fun question that popped in my head last night while taking, uh, talking with some of the boys in my clan. They say, what do you think lore slash story wise is the strongest creature that we as the player have ever killed? What is the strongest player? What is the strongest creature that we as a player have ever killed? Their examples are, like in the lore, the royal vampires are almost, are almost eldritch creatures, un unfathomably powerful and incomprehensible. So Verzik would be up there, question mark. Fragment of Seren is literally a corrupted part of a banished god. Nex is so powerful that the god wars generals band together in the middle of an all-out war just to trap her, etc., etc. The strongest creature. So... They already named three, Verzik, Seren, and Nex. Those are some of the, the big, big bads of the, the, the world of Gilinor. Uh, the one that people don't think of uh, because you, have, you literally kill it as if it was a chicken is Corporeal Beast. Like, Corp was designed to be one of the strongest bosses that you would ever have to kill in this game. But like, Game mechanics just work against that poor creature. And well, I think just... I think he's talking lore wise. So like Oh, lore Corp wise is like Corp is like a demon of the spirit realm or something. So for those of you who aren't up to stuff on the lore, RS3 had this whole big thing between 2007 and like 2010 where they released a series of like wilderness quest lines where they put all this shit in the game. And then the culmination of it was, I think the quest is called Summer's End. And the final boss is th a quest variant of Corp. Hmm. But you have to be in like a spirit realm to fight Corp. And then at the very end, Corp is like a repeatable boss you unlock after this. And then they got the, the four sigils in RS3 because the divine spirit shield is in RS3 as well. They kind of just took Corp because like God Wars, it was like between that like pre-EOC, pre-dungeoneering, HD-ish age. And they're like, eh, f*** it. People like Corp. We'll throw it in the game. So they added Corp to OSRS with no lore to back it up. So I think that's, that's Corp. Yeah. So I, th I would agree that Corp, <clears throat> like lore-wise, is pretty damn strong. Like, I don't... Again, I've never played the quests in RS3, so I'm not maybe the best authority 
I would have on it, but I feel like I would have loved them to have some sort of storyline to introduce Corp. If they had it, if they if they were introducing Corp now in 2023, and say it had never been sort of a boss in or, or questline in RS3, they, it, most likely it would be incorporated into uh, a quest. Get it? Incorporated. <laughs> incorporated. So because the, they kind of like at this point, I don't think they're just going to put like bosses into the game anymore. You know, like the last couple that we've had have all come from a quest line. You have Vorkath, you have Muspa, um, the new desert treasure bosses are going to be from a quest line. So it doesn't seem to me like they're just going to say, hey, a new boss. <coughs> Honestly, I think the last one is probably Seracnus. If I had to Hydra. use my brain. Oh, Hydra. Yeah. Well, Hydra and Seracnus uh, are both see. on Zaya, right? I mean... The wilderness bosses. True. But I mean, Hydra was 2019, I'm pretty sure. Mm. Granted, it's got a pretty steep requirement. Like, oh, well, yeah, yeah. Taco brought up Calvarion, which, like, that's what I was about to say. The wilderness boss reworks technically introduced They new just bosses. introduced, a, like, the same boss, but in a more convenient state. I wouldn't but even call it a even new boss. So, like, it's, same mechanics it's, and everything. Uh, no, they're brand new bosses. Venonatus now compared to Venonatus a year ago is not the same boss. So, like, you could argue that yes, they did add, yes. they didn't add new bosses, but they're so mechanically different that it is nothing like the old fights. True. So, I would argue that the three slash six new wilderness <laughs> bosses are the last ones. Speaking because, like, you could probably lump Calvarion and Venion. Spindle and Ardeo all with their bigger counterparts yeah. and they'll be fine. Yeah. But like, yeah, three to six new ones. Speaking of like quest bosses that we like quest lines that should explain bosses, I would actually really like if there was quests, like individual quests that like went into the lore of why there's a giant spider or why there's this giant skeleton with two phases. Um a giant bear might be less fun to to learn about but it, the the point still stands i think that if they had quests to that they wanted to release it would be really neat to have lore like behind the quest boss or the wilderness bosses because there's got to be lore out there somewhere there's got to be a reason why vedion was like mad and stomping around the wilderness we don't know i mean there's probably some sort of wiki article i would hope maybe in rs3 they explain it but for old school we don't know Vedion's in rs3 is it not no those are all are new they additions new? from 2014 hmm. they all came with the wilderness expansion that osrs did that like added a bunch of huh. shit to the wild the more you know <laughs> see I, I told you guys at the beginning we'll talk about rs3 very briefly <laughs> but sometimes we don't know what we're talking about with rs3 so besides Corp, which is what makes it fun <laughs> absolutely besides corp and besides the three that they mentioned i can't think of any other like i mean massively overpowered bosses that we fight i i would have said probably seren because you're fighting a literal god uh but i would argue that like so basing strictly off of the lore right the two that come to my head, Phantom Muspa, from what I think we saw on the wiki or someone told us, is like a phantom version, so a weaker version of what the strong things really are mm. from the Majorat. Like the Muspa species is like ridiculously powerful. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure the Barrows brothers were infused with this like Majorat curse that made them like unkillable really during their their siege of that part of the oh, wow. world for Sarah Dolman. but the whole thing was like a it was a trick it was a setup by i, I think a zaros priest i'm not huh. 100% sure on the on the details but the barrows brothers were like invincible but the the trade off was when they got wounded after the fact they like died of their wounds but we're never at rest. So oh. like the ghosts of the Barrows brothers that we are fighting, the six of them in real life were 
essentially demigods right during their campaign in Mauritania against you know Zamorak and the vampires and all that again I, I am not super brushed up on the details at the moment but I'm pretty sure they were a force to be reckoned with back in the day um I don't really want to think about nightmare oh I because like nightmare for sure nightmare <clears throat> From what I understand, which may be incorrect, Nightmare has come over from Ashihama to hunt people's dreams. You know how hard that shit is to kill something that hunts dreams? That's... Imagine, like, like if the Nightmare wasn't gross. just, con- like, like, contained within sleep or slept. Is it slept or sleep? Anyway, if it wasn't Who just knows? contained there... But it's it's just wild, right? So I think the nightmare is also probably up there lore wise as like that's a disgustingly hard fight. True. What about something like the Culineromancer? <laughs> because it's a silly boss. Like the whole quest is is pretty silly, but like they had to trap this again demon god thing away because the Culineromancer is like a divine creature, really. Like, that's why it's trapped away or something. I don't know if it's like, I don't know if divine is the right word, but like, it is a very powerful force that had to be trapped with like a cake of all things. But like, you know, like, I think the color romancer might be up there as well as like, oh, this, this guy's not to be, not to be trifled with here. (coughs) I didn't know that, honestly. Like, I just think of the recipe for disaster as the silly quest that you have to do to get your barrel gloves, but like, as if someone didn't read the goddamn dialogue, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think I did, even if even when I did it on this account, which is so sad. Maybe <coughs> the next one, maybe the next account, I will. Uh, I'll go ahead and read it. But how powerful are the wardens? Oh, from like, are 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 Elidnus and Temekin trapped inside those automatons? Is there, like, essence trapped inside them? Because, like, if that's the case, that's the equivalent of fighting Hera and Zeus at the same time. Yeah. With, from what I understand of the Metaphite Pantheon. I don't entirely know how, but, like, and we obviously haven't fought a Masket, which, like, do you think we'll fight a Masket? When they continue and unlock Menifos? I think they, I who think knows? Maybe like raids four. Maybe after Desert Treasure Two, when they when this whole thing comes to a head, unless it comes to a head in Desert Treasure Two, I have no idea. Um, maybe we'll fight a mask it proper, and that will probably be the strongest lore wise ever. Because the Devourer is pretty crack. Because I feel like I wouldn't put Verzik over as much as I hate his name. I don't think Verzik is stronger than Lorneal Draken, <clears throat> lore wise. Mm-hmm. I think that Lorneal will be up there when we do the because I think Sins of the Father is the penultimate quest. When we do the like Lord of Vampirium equivalent mm-hmm. from RS three and we fight Lord Draken, that in addition to being what is probably going to be a wildly difficult boss fight, is going to be lore wise the strongest because. You know, dinosaur is right. There, like I, he said, eldritch abominations. Which, <laughs> like, yeah, that's pretty up there. You know, like, I think within the theater, there's a like soda seg is from another dimension. So that's oh, I didn't pretty even scary. consider the demi bosses of the raid. So, like, you're thinking, uh, tecton. Tecton seems like meh. It's just a. It's a freaking I don't know much. giant, dude. There's there's lore behind all of the chambers mm-hmm. bosses because as far as I'm concerned, they were all servants or direct opponents of Zarek. That Zarek was like, "Get, f-ed. I'm putting you in this cave." Like that's that's more or less how all the chambers things got mm-hmm. there, right? Like Mutadiles were an experiment. Vasa was like a priest of Zarek or something like that. Again, I'm not up to snuff fully on the law on the lore at the moment, but. There could be some strong contenders within the chamber. I don't know how they top Ulm because, frankly, off the top of my head, I don't know the significance of Ulm. I don't know why Ulm is there. And Ulm is massive. I know that the warden, I know that the wardens are 
controlled by a masket in some way, and I know that Verzik herself runs the theater for the life of me. I don't know why Ulm is there. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'd probably have to do a little research, do a little bit of digging. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I mean, like, people are bringing up, like, in the recording booth chat, like, Giant Mole <laughs> and things like that. There are some that are just, like, freaks of nature. Like, yeah, I was having this conversation last night while I was out with my friend. She bought crickets to feed her spiders. And we were having a discussion of, like, the size of the cricket versus the size of the spider. Mm. As a human, picture a creature, like, seven times your size. And you have the realization, like, oh, I'm food <laughs> for this creature. Yeah. Like, that's horrible, right. you know? Or, like, you know, for example, like, if... She was telling me a story about how one of her crickets or something fell or a jumping spider she had in her finger. One of the tiny jumping spiders jumped onto the floor and then her brother's dog ate it. Ugh. Like imagine you fall 10 feet and a creature the size of a cruise ship just like oh, <laughs> eats you at one time. So if we look at some of like the animal bosses... I would never go near Calphite Queen. No. Never go near Venonatus. Never go near Seracnus. I would never go near, you know, even Cerberus. No thanks, dog. I'm good. Giant Mole. That's got to be uncomfortable. It's got to be dark. It's got to be smelly. Yeah. It's got to be like... Muddy. It's got to be... <laughs> yeah, like there's got to be some like the animals that we fight in this game have got to be just... Can you can you imagine Atrocious. killing a giant spider and then it goes hiss and you get stuck to the floor and it like scurries off, but then at some point you do enough like you do enough damage to scare it that it summons more spiders to kill you? Just think about Yeah, the summon the, the, the spiders person. it summons are like the size of a small car. Yeah. Like could you uh, no thanks, <laughs> dog. I can't. Like I'm not doing that. Like the Dagonoff kings are basically just like wish.com dinosaurs <laughs> and even then like i don't want to deal with that <laughs> shit man so like you know, i think iron otis in the recording booth chat which might wrap up this fun question says the demon slayer demon is disappointingly yeah. easy to fight because i think lore wise like they had to they had to jump through hoops to lock that demon away too mm -hmm. so i'm sure there's tons like the god what's his name nietzsche kend or whatever from legends quest that might be a tough one, lore wise, to fight. Um, the Black Demon from yeah. Legends Quest. No, there's so many. Yeah. There's so many like easy, <coughs> like quote unquote easy bosses that we fight in these quests that should be more menacing. You're you're absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> I'm pretty certain canonically, Elvark destroyed an entire right. civilization, <laughs> so, and I was like, level forty magic, you know? like safe spotting it, and then I just cut its head off. Like Elvark <coughs> was a menace to society, and you're just going in there and like takes five minutes. Yeah, and we say we say was because Elvark just destroyed the society. <laughs> like she just torched Crandor and took it yep. over. So that's why we have uh, Dragon Slayer too. We can make it seem like you know there's actually a hard boss to kill. Uh, don't get me wrong. Dragon when Dragon Slayer One came out, it was a difficult and menacing boss to kill, but now probably like 20 years later um you're like hey i just did dragon slayer on my lunch break today i think at that point in your account dragon slayer is still a menacing boss especially if you just free to play only the account which kind of goes hard. goes back to what we said in the the first part yeah bring bring the whole thing full circle absolutely but, god dragon slayer 2 that's such a hype quest holy <laughs> shit i can't wait to do that on this account <laughs> dragon slayer 2 is so much fun it's gonna be a good but, time yeah I think that about wraps it up. You know, I'm sure we could go further and I'm sure we could like find other bosses, but we'd be here all day. And as much as Michael and I would probably be fine with that, and as much as you guys would probably be fine with that, all good things must come to an end eventually. And this is where this good thing comes to an end. So if you want more of us within your ear holes, as Michael has said at the top of the episode, you can find 107 additional episodes to this on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, pretty much wherever you listen to podcasts, because I think all our episodes are on all those platforms. 
every single one from the get go. Um, follow us on Spotify because I think that's a thing you can do oh, now. Yeah. Uh, follow us and go rate ahead us. And, go ahead and follow us on socials as well. There'll be a link tree down below Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all the fun things that these that the kids are doing <laughs> these days with the social media. Go ahead and follow that. Um, at this point, there's not much of a point to following Michael or I on Twitch or YouTube because we don't make independent content these days. But, you know, we're putting all of our ducats into XP waste <laughs> and we couldn't be happier with that. So that's that's where you'll find us is here. Join our Discord down below. There will be a Patreon link. There will be a merch store link. Um, yeah, go check it out. Every link you will ever need will be in the description down below. Um, thank you guys for making it this far. Um, next week is going to be fun. Yeah. Get hyped for that. Next week. So, all right. With that, folks, we shall see you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.